guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline, and in today's video, we're gonna do shopping from two different places, two totally different types of shopping. We're gonna do Goodwill, as usual, and then we're gonna go over to Prussian Street Arcade. This is like a boutique-y kind of vendor space inside a big giant warehouse type building. I've brought you there before, and I always find great treasure. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's get on the road. Let's go to Goodwill and Prussian Street Arcade. Going down the lamps aisle, I immediately spot this gorgeous aqua turquoise blue lamp. Lucite base, glass, but upon turning it, I realized that there is a defect in it. I love this genie bottle lamp, so cool. If this didn't have damage, I'm afraid to say I would have bought that, so I'm kind of glad that it does have that light and defect and let's keep going. On the next aisle, I spot a topiary. I think somebody made this and it just gives me good memories. I used to own a business called Out of the Woods and I did dried floral design. Used to sell at fairs and flea markets and had a great time for several years doing that. So topiary is always fun to see, but I won't pick it up for resale. These little bowls are adorable. What are those used for? Salt cellars? I'm not quite sure what you put in those. If there would have been more of those, I would have picked those up. Okay, <laughs> now I'm just on the hunt, a serious hunt for Glassy Baby, which I knew those wouldn't be, but I am going to look at every glass with that rounded bowl shape. Clock was interesting. I think I might have showed that in a past video. Okay, this is a little on the edge, but items like this sell well. Now, I think this guy might have been a trick fountain i'm not even sure a bubble blower i'm afraid to say but he is not in good shape so i leave him behind there is the tap test like i said i look at pretty much every item sooner or later i mean not things like depends or different things that we know don't bring a good profit but anything that has the least little bit of interest i am all about looking at it turning it over and just seeing what it's made of this silver footed pedestal bowl, silver plate most likely, if that. I love these. This is Wallace and I believe it's silver plate. I like to pick those up as soap holders in farmhouse design, Victorian design, but I do leave that one behind because this is catching my attention, but $9.99, what? This is Temptations. If you find Temptations, some of the pieces can bring very good money but I think that's an onion soup crock where you put a sandwich on the tray. Very pretty, but I will have to run another comp because in my recollection, that won't even bring $10 or if it does, probably around that. But my buyer always has to pay shipping, so I'm super careful with heavy items these days because once again, USPS has raised their prices and I am bringing a lot of the bigger, heavier stuff to UPS in my CVS pharmacy location. All right. If you're a husband, buy this for your wife. <laughs> Bring this home. Beautiful life, beautiful wife. I thought that bird wall hanging was quite sweet. And now my mind just wants to look at every bird picture. I thought that would be fun to have a collage wall with all bird pictures. I love birds. I like this apple green color of that piece of stoneware no marking to speak of. And here I'm not planning on selling these, but I always look at the containers that people have made floral arrangements in. Because sometimes if you don't sell floral arrangements, you can just pass over, you know, a special bowl or a high priced vase that somebody used not knowing. So I'm always careful to look at the container of the pre-made floral arrangements. And now we are on the blue aisle, but my eye spots a green aluminum pitcher, water pitcher. This is vintage. I forget the name of this. I'll try to put it on the screen if I remember. In the cart it goes because I'm gonna run a comp. I know the tumblers, the drinking tumblers in the different colors. I think that's from the 60s. Those can bring good money, the aluminum ones. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? 
So I thought maybe the picture would bring good money, but after I ran a comp, um, it really didn't. So I did wind up putting that picture back. Here I'm just being nosy. Lots of hand spray antibacterial cleaner in the stores. I imagine we're going to be seeing that and masks for quite a while. Now I have looked at this bunny before. He's just a shelf sitter. Again, he's just very lightweight, a decoupage. Guys, I call decoupage any item that has a printed paper overlay. So if you have a vase or a wood piece or whatever and you cut out paper, you can decoupage it to any item. So recently I showed a wood item from my prior video and said it might be decoupage and I still stand by that. I don't know if that one was decoupage, but that is the art of decoupage. And now we are on to the pink, purple, everything aisle. I take a look at this vase. Some people call this lusterware or iridescent. This is just a ceramic piece. It won't bring high money. I'm guessing maybe five to seven dollars for that. But again, I always like to look. Here I really like the color of this cup. And this is Starbucks. I think these cups came in a set and you got one of four different colors, just a guess. And again, it was, I think, a gift set, if I remember correctly. I think I remember seeing that in Starbucks. Okay, so we are outside Prussian Street Arcade. This is Mannheim, Pennsylvania. This is one of my favorite places to shop. And not only is it a great place to pick up some home goods and just beautiful items, but they also have a great cafe bakery. So we might stop in there and see what they have. That is called Mill 72. And again, this is Mannheim, Pennsylvania. All right, let's go in together and see what we can find to flip for a profit. One of the first vendor booths that I always check out their wares is Creek and Willow Vintage. I think whoever's buying for this booth does a really good job and it's very curated and fun. Like I said, this type of shopping is so different than thrift store shopping. And you can still make a good profit shopping in places like this. That has been my experience. So here I'm looking at an enamel painting with an ornate frame, so pretty. I'm going to try not to say so pretty so much, but it is hard in this place. The butterfly print is catching my attention. I'm not sure if they took a piece of wallpaper and hand painted the butterflies. $20. So while that is a good price for buying it for personal use, I don't know that I would be able to flip that for much more. This little tray was kind of catching my attention. I don't think this is Lucite and it's marked Lucite. So that is the first thing to go in my cute little shopping cart until I give that thought and maybe do some research. I was just talking about French wire baskets in another video. And while this is a reproduction or it's an older one repainted, I thought this was a steal. To have these little coasters or snack trays and the basket for $12, I will take that all day long right in my cart. So you can see what I'm saying. The prices are really fair in this booth. I just love taking my time and looking forward to the iced coffee I'm going to drink. Here's a mid-century modern piece. I don't see any markings on it. I'm not even gonna guess who to attribute this to, but I thought it was like a double bud vase. And so absolutely, I take that also. Now the profit margin on these items won't be as high as the items that I find in a thrift store, because naturally they're a little bit higher here than they would be in a thrift store. But see what I'm saying? $8 for this pedestal wood dish. And this has so many uses. People love to repurpose things and just use items for, you know, different purposes. So I definitely put that in my cart. You guys know me. I am a sucker for all things wood. Wood boxes, wood trays, wood pedestal dishes. So I'm always keeping my eye open for good wood pieces. There were some napkin rings just made out of carved stone. And while I liked these, there were only three of them. And I really like to pick those up in fours or sixes or more. 
little square dishes or glass trays, $6 a piece. I might have taken them if they were two or three, but I still felt that $6 was more than fair, you know, for personal use. And while I like to pick up these type of bowls, I didn't care for the carving on that one, so I leave that one behind. And you can see groupings of thermoses and all kinds of fun things. My eye did not know where to look first. Here is their sign, Creek and Willow Vintage. So if you come to the Prussian Street Arcade, you wanna make your way to this booth if you love all things vintage and gorgeous pottery. Are we loving this piece? Oh yeah. Now it did have a stamp on the bottom I didn't recognize. Just a beautiful hand-painted green leaf design. So now I'm trying to precariously balance it in my cart and making sure that it'll stay. Okay, so I rearranged things in my cart because I'm not even in this booth five minutes and I have, I have more than I can fit. I think I showed the jars of different mixed playing pieces last time and there's a golden book framed all aboard. I think that's an adorable way to decorate a child's room. Very fun. And now I'm spying this top to a butter dish. This was really good, I felt, but there was no butter plate, so it was just the cover. So I do leave that one behind. One of the things that I love about Prussian Street Arcade is the vendor booths usually have a good amount of inventory, but it's not so crowded where you can't pick everything up and take a good look at it. Sometimes they go to antique stores or different flea markets, and it's such a jumble of stuff, it really makes shopping a work. But here, the shelves have just the right amount of items, and you're able to look at everything and just turn things over, look at the prices, pick things up, and I really appreciate it. $28 for this peacock vase. Again, not enough room for profit, but I did really like that. I also love these little bottles that are filled with greenery. Gives me ideas for the future. I thought a grouping of them would be really pretty. And once again, I love these little clear globes. I've seen these with air plants and different ideas. I think Etsy has quite a few of those. Here's a fireplace match stick holder. I've sold those before. I don't think I've ever gotten really good profit for that. So that I'd leave behind. And now looking over to the left. Just seeing what's on this shelving unit. I like picking up wicker baskets, but I like the older ones and usually animal shapes. I recently picked up a dog one that's very fun. Here is a, um, an owl that hangs on the wall. Sometimes these are wall pockets that a plant or something, you know, can come out of it. But that one was just a simple ceramic wall hanging. I don't know if this type of basket, I'm sure it has a special name. See how the woven pieces are very thin. This one is a sewing basket. In my opinion, that's vintage. And I do pick up um, that type of wicker quite often. It does quite well in my store. Again, not high profit, but it does sell through well. Here's a little, a little elf or a pixie. And now I'm noticing this shaker. I'm not sure if this is for like cheese or if it's um, maybe a flour jar where you shake on more on top of your dough. Really like this pattern and this colorway. Vintage, $8. I will definitely take that. And right next to it is this beautiful jar made in Japan. Again, a shaker. So correct me if I'm wrong, guys, are these flower shakers that you can keep it, you know, on your dough, on your dough table where you're rolling out dough and put more flour on it? Or is it for Parmesan cheese? I don't think it would be if it's vintage, but I could be wrong about that. So 
So here's an overview of what the booth looks like. And I have gotten quite a bit from this booth and have resold it. And even though I stopped to look at these cute little dishes, lacquered dishes, we know what my eye is really focusing on, the wood box. This box is really sweet, just a lightweight wood box. And I think that's material fabric that is lined with. So I reach for the tag, $14. I thought that was very good. This is all hand painted. Now, while it does show some wear, I don't think that's a problem with this type of item. And the latch is missing a piece, but again, I think this is really good and I will definitely put this in my cart. Some of the booths have clothing, some of them have uh, leather goods and newer items, and there are quite a few that have vintage hard goods like this one does. Okay, this little box was adorable, made in Belgium. $16 was a little bit out of my price range for something like that. If that would have been seven or eight, I would have scooped that up. So after I shop at this one booth, I do make a round. I go around the whole market and uh, see what else I can find. Like I said, a lot of the booths have clothing or other items, but I always pop in to see if they have, you know, just a few pieces of vintage or hard goods that I can, I can see if I want. This is an Ozark Mountain Man. I think I would have liked it better if he wasn't shiny. And now this piece of pottery I'm contemplating because I realize it has damage and I'm looking it over thoroughly because it did have a few hairline cracks, but it is made in France. It is vintage, gorgeous piece of pottery. So I say yes to it. Okay, let's go see what else we can find. In another booth, this caught my eye. This is my thrifting bag. I would need a much bigger bag, $20 a piece, but I thought that was fun. And as you can tell, this vintage clothing is just gorgeous. Vintage clothing for me is a little bit of a slow seller unless it's trending at the moment. So like if it's a cottage core dress or something like that, it sells through quicker. Here is another booth that caught my attention. I'm sorry if I didn't get all of the booth names, you know, the, the seller's names. Little cat wood art. Okay, can we tell I'm really into cats lately? So funny. I thought that print was very fun. And here I'm noticing this cat. I think it's a doorstop. Is that what they say? They don't say what it is. $13. How good is this? Leave a comment down below if you know if this is a doorstop. And if you notice my cart is empty, it's because it got so full, I had to put my items up with the cashier and she is wrapping them for me <laughs> as we go around a second time. This is a double ashtray in brass. I wasn't thrilled with the shape of this. So even though it's only $11, I do leave that one behind. And here is a kitty cat candle. I would never want to burn that, $9. So I don't pick him up. Lots of fun treasure to look at. I love the expression on that woman's face. How funny. And here I'm just looking at a few of the vintage pieces. I'll be dazzled. So even though the majority of this inventory for this vendor are books, I still like to pop in and see what they have. My eye is drawn to this paperweight. I thought first that the orange inside were seashells, but I don't know what that's supposed to be. And I keep rubbing it to see if the bloom is in the glass or if this fogginess is just, this needs to be cleaned. So thank goodness for antibacterial wipes that I carry in my handbag. <laughs> I love when you guys say, hey, you should put on a crossbody and just have a little purse with you, you know, for security. Guys, once again, my handbag is filled. I carry antibacterial wipes, water, 
um, sometimes an extra pair of clean socks, snacks, besides all the regular things that we all carry in a handbag, camera equipment, chips, batteries. There is no way I could use just a little crossbody with a credit card and, you know, some cash. I love that you guys think that, though. Piece of pottery that was quite beautiful. And when I look at the price tag, I realize that because this isn't marked, it's probably not worth picking up. Here I'm looking at a plate. I thought this might have been by a Pennsylvania pottery house and it is for a special occasion. So I do leave that behind because that would really be a narrow audience that you're trying to sell that to. I think a good thing when you're looking at things is to say how many people are looking for this type of thing generally. Is it something that it's just gonna be a handful of people because then it's gonna take a very long time to sell. Even though eBay is one of the biggest platforms, if not the biggest for vintage hard goods, it's really important to know what your market is, who your market is, I should say. Because if you have something that really has a lot of eyes on it, of course we know it's gonna sell much quicker and if there aren't too many of them, you can really command a high price. Just some figurines, a little bit of pottery, a little cat digging in a garbage can, Lowell and Davis. So a lot of these vendors do run comps themselves, but they do price their items to move because they want to have an outlet for stocking you know, they won't price as high as some of the thrift stores even. So that's why I go into these types of stores. $8 for this little creamer. Adorable. If the sugar bowl would have been there, I would have taken that. If the sugar bowl was there and they were $8 each, $16, I would have to get at least 32 to make it worth my while. Okay guys, so that is the end of thrifting and shopping together. Here is a still shot of Prussian Street Arcade in Mannheim, and I will leave you with a few food shots from next door, Mill 72 Bakery and Cafe. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.